This is Marilyn. All right. <clears throat> Forgive me if I do a lot of reading from this because I was going to speak to you before a number of weeks ago and uh, yesterday or the day before the Lord spoke to me, he said, put that over here and I'll give you something different. So <laughs> I just wrote about eight pages of what he was telling me to do and um, I don't really have it on the inside of me to make a public speak on it. But anyway, I am speaking tonight on a totally different subject. Aren't you glad? <laughs> I'm going to talk to you about pressing into the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is, um, you know, it's, it's what's happening right now. And, and we're in a whole different place in church. And I think for most of us, for anyone that's sitting here, you have to realize that the things that we're talking about now are going to be so different, and it's going to change very, very rapidly. So we, as a church, are really um, stewards of secrets. Colossians 2.2 talks about that. Jesus was the mystic secret of our God. And the kingdom of God arrives to open our hearts. The kingdom of God... Um, We've got to be open to receive. This message not comes from our world. It's not a world's message. But what we honor, we attract. Do you know the king do you know about the kingdom of heaven? How much do you know about the kingdom of heaven? We have to take responsibility. We have to remember that God includes us uh, as as the part that is missing. So we're a whole new part for what's going on in, in uh, the kingdom of religion and Christianity today. We are light and life and his blood. New creations in him. We live and move and have our being. How, how do we go? We can touch stars. We can go to the stars. We can see uh, universes of his creation two trillion galaxies out there that we can explore. We can visit Mars next door. We better heat it up a little bit, but we create the future now. Now is the time that we're going to step out of where we've been and legislate. So let's go to Mars and release the blue light and heat it up, and let's watch the rapid changes that happen in the frequencies, in the planets, in the stars and moons, and all the kingdom is encompassing. See the pure energy forms as releasing many, many things that we've not been familiar with. We're the landscapers. We're the design for the future. We're called to do it. Light relax. Light reacts and forms waves and particles. But we can even departiculate. Joy is our business. We should be all about joy. So it's heaven's business. Wisdom, the spirit of wisdom, was an artist. She was amazing. She danced as God created the world and the heavens. She delighted in God. She delighted in songs, uh, righteous songs, and we are the righteous family. Father delights in each one of us, no matter where we've been or what we've done. When we're released from those things, we come into the church system, and we are mostly ignoring the angels. The second-day church, or the churches most of us have gone to, um, did not participate with angels and talk with angels and go to heavenly places and so forth. But we are the ecclesia, the church system, and we are the overcomers. We're to be the overcomers. Many people are taught that we die and go to heaven. I'm going to remind you that there are no dead people in heaven. We can already be in heaven if we want to be, but we're raised up with Jesus Christ. We are seated in him from above, and we need to shift 
because we're righteous people. We are pillars of fire and light in his love. There is, There are the heavens and the earth, and we are born of the Spirit, and we are a spark of the divine, a spark of God himself. Jesus Christ is the Lord of the spirits, and in him we are given amazing high-level assignments on earth and in heaven. So there are no dead people in heaven, but everlasting beings of light. We need to get over thinking when people die that that's how they are in heaven. They're not. You and I were made for another world of stars and planets, levels of beings that we haven't been with familiar before. But we're coming to a time when we'll even be teaching angels. Imagine working with angels and becoming supernatural. You and I can fly, and we do. Wake up, church. It is time to wake up and get over our baby stuff that we learned when we were little kids and come into where we need to be. I used to fly over nations in my dreams. That became a reality. Then I went to the nations and um, saw God change things. I've actually been in uh, almost 120 nations. So a new normal awaits us. We are submitted. We are surrendered. We've died. We've been crucified. And we're really aliens in this world. We are so different from men that are not enlightened in the things of God. In God, Adam gave us a government over the earth. We're actually owners of the earth. Speaking of Adam, my daughter-in-law and, and Judea, uh, who is my son's wife, and I were walking on the beach in heaven one day, and we saw a guy in the, in the distance walking with his dog, we thought. And so we were just walking down the sand and the waves were over here. And we walked up to him and said, you know, what, what's your name? And he looked at us kind of funny and he said, I'm Adam. And we said, you're Adam? He said, yes. And we said, the real Adam? And he said, yes. And we said, well, what's the name of your dog? And as we looked at this dog, we realized it wasn't a dog, it was a lion. And he said, his name is Rib. So, we, <laughs> speak. anyway, that was an interesting time in heaven. We're redeemed from ignorance and innocence. Jesus Christ was the firstborn of the new family. So naturally, right now, nationality, our age, our education, our history is over. It's over. It's done. What you heard before is just gone out of our lives. It's gone that way because we choose that. And so you and I are new creations as Jesus Christ. He is our blueprint. You and I are Christ-like. We are redeemed. We are innocent. And we want God calling on us. We want Enoch approaching us. And so how supernatural will you be? Will you take the steps to become this new person in Christ? Will you bilocate? Will you departiculate? Will you talk to angels? Gabriel and Michael have often come into our upper room for ministry meetings or when Judy and I have been praying up in that place. And uh, we can go to stars and galaxies our God is looking to break open every agitation and trouble and tremble going on. And we have grace as we go to the nations, as we can change the nations. A glory invasion is coming as we surrender to God's plans and purposes on earth. Church doesn't have to be as usual. We don't have to be as usual Christians. We can do all these supernatural things. Ask for an invasion of glory on earth. Be a designer. Be an architect. Be crafting great and wonderful things. Write books and let the angels help you. 
They'll help you from the heaven. Be a mystical seeker of God. Become intimately acquainted with God. Be intimate with the Lord Jesus, motivating everything back to God. We do need family. We do need connections. But we can talk to angels. Esther, um, actually, I can say, believe in the unseen realms. Know about hidden mysteries, because they're right there. All right. The foundation of the deep is actually in us. God wants us to speak from the living waters that are inside of us. And that's exciting. We can know truth beyond our human knowledge and understanding. Jesus Christ continually seeked his Father. He came so that we might know the Father. And we come into unity and oneness with Jesus. So how often do you talk to angels? Enter into the divine presence. Believe in the unseen. Know about hidden mysteries. Jesus Christ can use us to bring faith, the truth beyond human knowledge. Let his love enfold you. Be mystics who can deeply love Jesus and others. Be in union with others. God tells us his secrets and profound mysteries. We can become one flesh with Jesus, and God loves us all. Michael and Gabriel met me in our ministry upper room over our garage and spoke to us of things to come. Angels surprise us in our house. And they have come often to examine the things in my kitchen, play with the draperies, and examine the coffee in the coffee pot. They guide my car. They bring me safety in times of trouble, and they'll do these things for you. They are with us always. It's just that many times we don't see them. So when we truly believe, we dare to believe. Angels have always gone before me into the nations, always helped and made a way for decrees and for declarations that bind the enemies on earth and in heaven, heavenly places. Angels help us write books so that we can co-labor with the Lord. He opens the eyes of our heart. And Holy Spirit wants to shape your life. He wants to be involved with you. And, you know, eternity is already in our hearts. We're born with eternity in our hearts. One day, the Spirit of God took uh, my daughter-in-law, Judea, and I to heaven to see how they dealt in heaven with aborted babies. And Gabriel took us into this room where there were um, strings, heavy strings hanging from the ceiling. It was a lower-level ceiling here. And they came down and had Petri dishes, the little glass dishes that you have in chemistry. <laughs> and the string would come through, three or four of those. And the women that were in there said to us, well, take a look into the little Petri dishes. And so we did. We'd get up and, and look into the dish. And I said, but it looks like there's just a seed in there. And she said, that is a child. That's the seed that was aborted that we have placed into the Petri dish that is going to become a baby. And she said, let's go into the other room. So she took us into the next room, and there were similar uh, long strings hanging down where they had placed the Petri dish around the string. And those inside of those were little bitty babies that looked perfect with arms and legs, but just tiny, tiny, tiny little babies that couldn't have lived except in heaven. So um, in the third place, she showed us, they had taken them into a type of incubators that we haven't seen on earth. But they didn't have any attachments to the incubators. They just, the baby, the little baby was there after it came out of the second um, Petri dish and was growing. And 
with no attachments, and they raised them, and after they went there, then they would take them to the next apartment where they would start, you know, anything they needed. So we want God to open the eyes of our heart. He wants to share life with us. But at any rate, what I wanted to say, but that was really interesting. Five minutes left. Oh, my gosh, I've got three pages left. Um, <clears throat> our God gives us hope for the future. He wants us to know who we are in him. He's who we, he's created us to be. Love never fails. If we believe him, it's impossible for God to fail, so we need to believe him. Do you believe what he thinks of you? How wonderful you are. You and I need to be swallowed up in the bliss and the understanding of what God thinks about us because he thinks wonderful things about us. Enoch generation is coming. It's here already, realm after realm, where we can even meet those people like Enoch that were here and there, walk in the spirit with him, living in wisdom. Joan of Arc lived in the 16th century. One of the times when I was in heaven, um, I walked up to this woman with gray hair that she just looked familiar. And I had recently come back from France and uh, visiting the place that Joan Arc ministered when she was 16 years old, and then they um, basically killed her there. And so she's been in heaven ever since. And she looked at me and she said, Marilyn, and I'm thinking, how does this woman know me? And she said, did you know that I pray for you? And I said, no. I said, are you really Joan of Arc? I, I, I don't recognize you at all. And she said, well, of course not. I was 16. <laughs> and she said, I've been here a long time. But let me show you the place where I pray for you. And so I said, OK. And we walked down this not too far from where she was. And there was kind of an edge that looked over toward the world. And you know when you go to a park, they have those things you can put your eyes up to and look in the distance. And they had that in heaven. And she said, look here, I'm going to turn these, and I can see right into your kitchen window when I'm praying. And I said, that's amazing, because heaven is so far away. How possibly? And she said, it's just so. So there are many things in heaven that we don't understand are just so. That's the way it is. So you, do you believe what he thinks of you? We need to be swallowed up in bliss and intimacy. And Enoch, the generation that's, that's now calling to us, the Enoch generation and angels in realm after realm, we get to walk in secrets that he tells us about and wisdom, loving others as he loves us. And so Joan of Arc also gave me a gift when I was there, and I asked her, why she had gray hair, because I remembered her, you know, the pictures of her when she was 16 before she was killed. And she said, I can have whatever color of hair I want in heaven. She said, if I want to look old one day and have gray hair, I can have gray hair. She said, there are other days when I just want my hair totally different. And I thought that was amazing. So there are so many things in heaven we don't know we just absolutely don't know about. But I'm excited about what there is for us. And I want you to be excited because we live in a very mundane world sometimes and we forget about all the wonderful things that are waiting for us in heaven. We forget about all the great things that we could be participating in if we would open the eyes of our understanding and step up and step up and believe and believe and believe. Since I was a young child, I have believed. And since I was a young child, I've walked with angels. And since I was a young child, I've gone back and forth from heaven. And I'm saying most people just think that's a story that's made up. But I'm here to tell you, you can have every bit of it and more if that's your desire.
Amen. Okay. So um, Marilyn started her talk with the idea of um, pressing into the kingdom of heaven. And um, on our Monday night Bible study, this verse came out. It says, call to me and I will answer you. And I will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. And so if you're willing to start calling out to the Lord, if you're willing to hear, if you're willing to uh, believe from this day forward, you're, you, you have the capacity to know great and hidden things from the Lord. And that's why this church embraces things like ascensions. We embrace things um, that are a little bit um, out there, mm -hmm. according to parts of the church. But, but we have to know that God is for us, is for us, is for us. So does anybody have any questions for Marilyn? Here comes Dave. And Richard, I'll, bring, I'll have Dave bring the mic to you when he's done. So your dreams, do you, do you experience a lot of this in dreams? Or how do your dreams work in all of this? Well, dreams to me are totally different than experiences in heaven. Um, when you dream things, like first when I was dreaming about the nations, before I spent so much time in the nations, um, I would be flying in my dreams. I would be flying over nations. And one dream I particularly remember was, I think I always thought it was Italy. And I was just not too far above the rooftop, and, and it was like a block of houses, and they had fences, and you could see everything in their backyards. And I flew right above the roof level, you know, for miles above neighborhoods. And it was early, early in the morning, I could tell, because the people weren't out. Children had left their toys and things. And every now and then, the Spirit of God would show me something I'd need to deal with. You know, I didn't stop flying, but I'd remember those things in my heart. And when I got home, I would pray. When I got home, <laughs> I would pray about those things. But it becomes very real to you. I mean, it's just as real as we are sitting here looking at one another. But that's, that's so fun. I just love to do that. And I asked the Lord to do that. Actually, sometimes when angels would come and talk to us in the upper room at home, in the ministry room, they would explain things and answer questions and be there for a while. Michael and Gabriel have often come, and I have a lot of stories about Michael and Gabriel, but they have often gone before Judea and I on these trips into South America and different places and gone ahead of us and helped prepare the way. Um, it's just a fascinating life to me. It's something that... I look forward to all the time, and the thing is, it's easy to let the complexities of life get you in a position where you don't even dare to dream or dare to believe these things. And that's why we as believers have to have eternity in our hearts, that these things of God actually are so real. I often have talked to people that look at me and say, well, that may be fine for you, Marilyn. However, I've never had any experiences like that. And I said, well, but you can. And the basis of that is, as she just said, is believing. Believing is what we have to do. And I didn't start out... I, I just I did grow up in a Christian family, so I was in church three days a week, and um, then I was ordained as a minister at 37 years old. So I've got a lot of God behind me in family and so forth, but it really makes no difference. If you set your heart and your mind to do it and to come into that place where you actually believe God and you believe heaven and you believe that you can do these things, that's where... I'm probably different than most people is because I believe. 
Angels are not strange to me. Going to heaven is not strange to me. I can go to bed and, and want to dream, and, and I get dreams. I mean, I've just learned how to do it. Um, I've had very men, little, 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 teeny uh, experience with angels. Um, I can only remember maybe a couple of times where I, 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 I assumed that was an angel next to me. I sensed it. I've never seen any. What would you say to um, someone like me or someone that's interested? Where, what, what would you suggest in doing to experience more in the angel realm? Well, one of the things that I did that I really haven't talked about was praying in tongues. I really would spend daily time set apart to pray in tongues and to pray. And then I would, would write uh, declarations and decrees um, once I met Nancy Cohen and Restoration of All Things. Um, I'd write those things and be very faithful to do that. You know, our lives are so filled and so busy with busy things and other things we want to do that you really have to, I would plan a time. And I would get Judea, who was the closest person to me. Um, she's now teaching Kara students how to prophesy. She's an amazing prophet now. She's just married to my son. But we would get together and you know, just pray in tongues and pray in tongues and do the work of the ministry and then go and pray in tongues. And that's when God took us on some amazing trips into even to hell, which is a whole nother story. But, you know, it's, it's, it's such an exciting life. It's so exciting to me. I'm always so excited about the things of heaven and about meeting angels and about even these demonic things and seeing in the spirit, but it doesn't come by just living a normal life. I mean, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Um, worship team, you want to come on up? And um, I'm going to have Meg and Tim come up because they had this incredible encounter in an ascension concerning angels. And I felt like this morning that I was supposed to ask them to share it. And I understand through uh, why between the two, two uh, talks um, as to why that is. And so when they're done, we'll, we'll do a little bit of worship. Thank you, Vicki. Yeah. Thank you, Marilyn. Mm -hmm. Praise God. <laughs> yeah, praise God. Well, it's a good follow-on to Marilyn's talk because uh, we're uh, some of those weird people, too, that like to ascend. And... Uh, we're so happy about Let it. We've been doing it for years. There's several people here, including our pastor, that att attend some of the Ascension meetings. Uh, Joyland does, too, on Monday mornings and Wednesday afternoons. You can find out about it on joylandlife.com, uh, uh, the times and uh, how to meet and what codes to use. But we were doing one. We're a part of the Joyland where we, lead, we host the one on Monday mornings. But on Thursdays, we're part of Global Ascension Network. And with Global Ascension Network, we have a Thursday morning meeting. And this probably this last time, there was probably about 15 people on, a uh, couple foreign folks. We had people from Germany and a gal from uh, Greece join us on Thursday morning. And the meeting started off by, just like most of the meetings start, Jesus is the invitation to heaven. He became the new veil. And when he became the new veil, he gave us access with no other sacrifices needed to go into the throne room. And God bless us with all the gifts that you have in the throne room, the seven gifts, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel, might, spirit of the Lord, spirit of the fear of the Lord, all represented by the rainbow colors over the throne. And we just went into the throne room. And when we were in the throne room, I saw Jesus. He gathered us all around. He said, I got some things to share with you today. And he had a lot to share. But what Vicki wanted me to focus on, and I'm going to focus on, is the fact that when we got together with Jesus, Meg saw an army of angels. 
We were standing uh, in a group. We had just arrived, and he was giving us hugs, and he always is very gracious. And a lot of times we go through a, like, cleansing. We might go into the river of life. We might stand under the waterfall, but there's a time of cleansing. In this particular case, we didn't go through any of that. We just immediately went in because he was about the father's business. And as we're standing there and we're gathered and... Uh, we're talking about righteousness and we're talking about other things. I saw us in surrounded by the uh, army of angels and um, they were in their usual attire and very large and, but that's what I saw. Yeah. Well, one of the young ladies in our group is Shannon and Shannon said, you know, I see the angels too, but you see, I see Jesus assigning each and every one of us a warring angel. That angel is assigned to you for a reason. So we all started asking, well, why the particular angel that we had was assigned to us? And it wasn't a personal angel. It wasn't our guardian angel. Meg and I asked for who our guardian angels were, and they gave us a name. Mine was, was Simeon, and Meg's is Hazel Elamine. And we know that they're with us 24-7 guarding us, and it was kind of nice to know their name, but these were warring angels. And I said, well, warring angel, what's your name? And he said, I'm Justice, J-U-S-T-U-S, -U -U which I also found out was a reference name that sometimes Jesus got in Colossians. I said, interesting, Justice. Well, why are you assigned to me today? And he said, because we were spending, in this ascension, we were spending a lot of time in the tree of life. You know, Jesus like stuck one of those things that you see in the maple tree to pull the sap out. He stuck it in the tree of life and he gave us each a chalice and we all filled it with the sap from the tree of life. And he said, now drink it, you know, and we drank it and we just had this wonderful experience with Jesus and we all shared it with one another. And so the next thing I said to Justice, well, why were you assigned to me? And he said, Tim, you don't always spend as much time as you should in the tree of life. I said, oh. And he said, sometimes you spend some time in that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And he said, I don't want you to spend time there. I want you to see what happened and why I'm here with you. And he had a large sword. And uh, my second favorite scripture, my favorite one is John 14, 20, as most of you know. But my second favorite was Proverbs 3, 5 that he'll make my path straight or, or direct my path, right? So he said, look at your path. And I saw vines coming up and weeds. And he said, is that the clear path that the Lord's laid out for you? I said, no. And he said, that's why I'm here. So I'm walking with him and he's got a sword and he's just whipping that sword back and forth, clearing that path. And he said, you want to keep that clear? And they said, yeah. And he said, keep drinking from the tree of life. Keep eating from the tree of life. Stay out of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And everybody had their own experience with their angel. They explained how they were dressed and what they were there for. And do you remember what yours was there for? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I had a clear picture of that. You know, God's blessed me with I being have a. The notes. Yeah. I have the notes. <laughs> yeah. But I've been, I'm a seer, and uh, I've been blessed with that. But the experience in ascensions, everybody, some people see, some people hear, some people feel. You know, whatever the experience is for heaven for you, it, it's just wonderful. I, I, you know, and where does it all start? With your imagination. He's given us a God given imagination. He only told us to stay away from vain imaginations. There's nothing vain about wanting to spend time with the Lord in heaven. Thank you. So um, I believe that when God gives something like a warring angel, um, we can also access that. And so, um, you know, during worship, don't be afraid to just open your heart to the fact that Maybe you need a warring angel to cut your pathway so that you're not stuck in the things of the world. And uh, the tree of knowledge is sometimes it can overwhelm us, and we 
we don't even realize that we're starving um, because we're not eating from the tree of life. And so I just um, want to bless you guys, you know, think about your angels. It's, it's, you know, we see them all over the place. Jen started with testimonies of Richard, how those two men stopping for him were angels. And we all have angel testimonies. And um, anyway, I thought it was important for you to realize that you also have available to you a warring angel. So, grasped it.